In this video, we're going to look at two important features of the PixInsight user interface. First, the image readout options. When we click on an image, a small window appears with basic data about the pixel being read. The X and Y coordinates, the RGB values, and if the image has an astrometric solution, the right ascension and declination coordinates. Remember, in order to see these coordinates, we need to calculate the astrometric solution. We can do this using the Image Solver script, but we can also automate it in the preprocessing script by checking the Astrometric Solution checkbox in the Lights tab. The Astrometric Solution is used later by some of the post-processing tools. For example, SPCC needs it to locate the stars it uses to calibrate the color. The image readout also includes a small window that zooms in on the image. This allows us to study the image in detail, even if it's displayed on the screen in a small format. If the image readout window doesn't appear, click on the Readout Options icon at the bottom and enable the Show Readout Preview option. If this option is disabled, the image readout window won't appear when we click on the image. In the readout options, we can select which data we want to read. For example, we can calculate the lightness component of a color image in real time. We can also display the data as a normalized real readout and select the resolution we want. Or as an integer readout with an integer range of between 8 bits up to 32 bits. Because most cameras use 16 bits, the 16-bit range is very useful because the pixel values it displays are the same as the camera ADUs. The second user interface feature we're going to look at is the channel selector in the top toolbar. Using this selector, we can choose to display the RGB channels separately or choose channels from other color spaces like the lightness channel as well as different chrominance representations. To display these channels, the image must be stretched because these color spaces are designed for working with nonlinear images. If we go back to the linear image and stretch it with STF, when we preview the chrominance, we can see hardly anything in the background. Remember, this is what a linear image really looks like with no contrast in the darkest areas. The same thing happens with both chrominance display modes. If we just display the L, we can only see the centers of the stars and the lightest part of the nebula. So, to display these channels, we need to stretch the image first. There are two buttons here to extract the lightness component and split the RGB channels. Here we have the three primary colors, and here we have the lightness component. The lightness component can be very useful for creating masks in the post-processing stage. We talk about creating and using masks in detail in Video 9 in this series. Thank you. 